Good morning, everyone. I want to thank so much for Norm for his presentation and the Boy Scouts for being here today. So, of course, the topic is Memorial Day. And we talk about the soldiers that have, have lost their lives. They paid the ultimate price for our country. People, I'm going to talk to you today about one man in particular that paid the ultimate price for your soul, Jesus Christ. We live in a fallen world. Sin was brought into this world by Adam and Eve. And since then, it is hereditary. Sin is hereditary. You are born with sin. And a lot of people say, well, how could, how could an innocent child be brought into this world? They're so innocent. Think about it. Has anyone ever had to teach their kid how to lie? Has anyone ever had to teach their kid how to steal? Or to be jealous of something else. That comes natural. You can watch a kid playing happily with his toy or her toy. And see another child playing with a different toy. And that child wants it. It's covetedness. Ask a child if they took cookies from the cookie jar. And they got crumbs all around their face and chocolate around their face. And they'll say, no, I, didn't I don't know what you're talking about. That's lying. No one has ever taught their kid to be dishonest. Yet we have to teach them to be honest and to be righteous. We have to teach kids these things. We were all born with sin. All of us. So the good news is that Jesus Christ has paid the price for that sin. You see, we're all destined for hell. And a lot of you might be saying, well, I'm a good person. I don't think I'm really going to hell. I mean, that, that's for bad people like Hitler and people like that. But you see, God gave us the Ten Commandments. Every one of us has broken at least one, one commandment. And think about this. If you were suspended over a cliff by a ten-link chain, each link representing a commandment, if you break one of those links, you're going to fall to your death. It doesn't matter if you've only broken one of the, camp, one of the Ten Commandments. The price is death. The price is hell. Soul death. So, this usually works best if I'm asking you one-on-one. -on -one, but we're going to do this as a group. So, if any one of us in here... And just answer this to yourself, or be truthful, be honest to yourself. You're not fooling anyone but yourself. Has any one of you lied? Right? What do you call a, what do you call a person that lies? A liar. Has anyone ever stolen anything? No matter how small it is, even if it's a stick of gum. What do you call a person that steals something? A thief. Right? Now, this is for the older people. If you look at another person with lust, Jesus says that you have already committed the sin of adultery in your heart. That's pretty steep. Jesus always took it to another level. Right? Has anyone used the name of God in vain? OMG, any of that. That's blasphemy. That's punishable in the Old Testament by death. And here's the thing. God was okay with it. So by your own admission in your own hearts, you may be a lying, cheating, blasphemous thief. Right? And those are just a few of them. I gave an analogy one time to a person who thought they were a good person. He said, no, no, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I go to church and everything. Okay. But you see, the whole thing is you have to have the relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to have a relationship with God. Without that, you could be the best person in the world. It wouldn't mean a thing. So my analogy goes like this. 
What if you lost everything you've ever owned? Everything. Everything you've ever owned, you lost. And you had nowhere to turn. And you see a mansion, and you think, well, that person has plenty of room, plenty of money, they can easily support me until I get on my feet. And you go in and knock on that door. The person opens the door and says, may I help you? And you say, I lost everything. Can I stay with you? I, I am homeless. I, I don't have anything. I don't have any friends or family in this area. Can I stay with you? Well, what, what's that person going to say? I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know you. Right? Who's going to let a stranger into their house? Especially in these times. Now let's just change that up a little bit. What if that person loved you? You had fellowship with them. You talked to them daily. Right? I guarantee you have a different outcome. Sure. My house is your house. Come right in. Of course. What can I do for you? Can I get you something? You must be hungry. Right? That's what a relationship with God is like. You could be the best person in the world. But you don't want to be in that position on the last day when you're, when you're face to face with Jesus. He says, sorry, I don't know you. Right? Another example is, you can say, well, you know what? I, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in the afterlife. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in any of those things. It doesn't matter if you believe him or not. It's the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It is the truth. And what if on that last day you go to, you're, you're, you're there in front of God and you say, but I was a good person. And you, and you say, well, you know what? I, I didn't believe in any of those things. So let's say the analogy goes like this. You were caught speeding and you got a speeding ticket. And you go to court. And you say to the judge, yes, I, I, I was speeding. But you know what? I, I don't believe the speed limit should be 55. I feel like I'm a good driver. I got a very fast car that can handle those roads very easily. I think it should be this. I think it should be something higher, right? It's just going to look at you and say, I don't care what you believe. It doesn't matter what you believe. These are the rules. These are the laws. I have to uphold these laws. <laughs> See, God gave us the laws, the Ten Commandments. Now, none of us can actually uphold those laws. It's... it's by our nature, our sin nature, it's impossible. But we can do anything through Christ. So my question is, looking at I, I, the people that I see here, I, I believe most of you are saved. But I just want to go to, if you would all turn to your Bibles, if you turn to John chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 1 says this. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that if you have come by God as a teacher, for no one can do, as, do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his, mother womb, his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So you see, 
Nicodemus came to at night because it was very controversial for him to come during the day. And he, I think he wanted to avoid any controversy since he was a high priest. And he couldn't fathom the fact, how do you be born again? And that was something I'd always, that I always pondered on, is being born of the water. And I always wondered what that meant. And then God revealed it to me one day. When each and every one of us is born, we're born in, a, in, a, in the mother's womb, and it's an ambionic fluid, which is mostly water. So, I mean, it's even said that when a, a mother is about to give birth, her water breaks. You see, each and every one of us is born of water. And this is what Jesus was talking about here. We were all born of water. But you have to be born of water and of the Spirit. How do you get the Spirit? The only way is through Jesus. The only way you get the Holy Spirit is through Jesus you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You actually have to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Unless you have done that, you will not see the kingdom of God. At some point in your life, you need to ask Jesus to come into your life. And that doesn't really count. See, I was born as a Catholic. And we all believe that confirmation Right? That was, so first of all, in Catholic religion, you, you, you're saved because you had baptism. And then you, just to make sure, you're, you're confirmed. But let me tell you, when I was a kid, it wasn't never asked, well, do you want to do this? It was more or less, you're doing this, or else. I, we, we didn't have a chance. I mean, any, any, no one, none of us really had a, a choice as a kid. See, that's the thing about being born again. It's, just, it's a choice you make. See, God's going to hold us all accountable for the choices that we make, not that the parents made for us. And so I ask you, and be honest with yourself, have you asked Jesus Christ into your life? If you have not, I want to give you the opportunity right now, because let me tell you, if you have not, you don't know what's going to happen. You could walk out in that street and be hit by a car. You can have a heart attack right now and die. The options are limitless. You don't know. Why take that chance? So even if you didn't believe in God, the thing is, why would you risk it? What if what the Bible says is true? If it's false, you lived a great life. You lived an honest life. If it's false, I can assure you it's not. But using a logical standpoint, if it's false, you just live a good life, right? But if it's true, we know it's true. Why do we know it's true? Well, what about all these other religions that are out there? There's so many to choose from. Pick one, right? How do we know that the Bible is true? How do we know that Christianity is the way, the truth, and the life? How do we know that? It's simple. One man, and that's Jesus. See, every other prophet, every, every other representative, of every other religion is dead and buried. Every one of them, except one. That's Jesus. Let me tell you, that's some trick. Right? To say you're going to die and come back and then do it. And be seen by more than 500 people. No other religion can do that. No other religion has Jesus. Right? Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Always was, always will be. Muhammad, he's, in, he's buried in his grave. Right? So is Buddha. I can't even tell you how many Dalai Lamas have been so far. I think we're on the sixth or eighth or something like that. Right? Even popes. We go through popes. But there's one, and that's Jesus. And he said that the Bible is true. He said that everything that Moses said is true. Everything Moses said, who we believe is the author of, of the, the beginning of the Old Testament. 
He wrote it all down. And he's saying that what Moses said is true. Who are we to argue with the Son of God? Who are we to argue with God himself? Jesus is God incarnate. Who are we to argue and dispute that? So I ask you, is there anyone in this room today that wants, that has not before? And just in case you're not sure, better be safe than sorry. Raise your hand if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ. That's what I thought. Okay, good. So now, now I ask you a different question. So Jesus Christ paid a ransom for you. You see, even if, even if you were the only person on this earth that wasn't saved, Jesus still would have gone to the cross for you. Think about that. Let that sink in. Even if you were the only person, Jesus would have gone through the torment, the torture, the death, all of that for you. For you and you alone. So now the question that I have is, for the price that was paid, are you living up to that? In a roundabout way, is Jesus getting his money's worth? Let's put it in a term and a text that we could all understand. Right? Jesus was tortured. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for you. And what are you doing? Are you living for Jesus? Are you living the life that he expects of you? You know, so many times people say, well, you know what, I, I put a, a cross on the back of my car or a fish or something, or, you know what, I, I, and I do something just in a slight monetary, and even if it reaches just one person, and it was all worth it. Is that enough? Is that enough? I don't think there's anything that we do that can be enough for the price that Jesus paid for us. I really don't. So many times I, I, see, I see people and, you know, and it, I, I, try to, I try to talk to them. And, you know, a lot of times I fail because I get scared or um, no, no, now is not the right thing. And I make excuses for myself. And then I think about it afterwards and I'm like, what if that was the one person that was going to die tomorrow and I didn't give them the chance to hear the gospel? What if it was that person? And then the Holy Spirit convicts me. All of us. It's not just a priest or a pastor or some or a pope that it's his responsibility to give the message out. Each and every one of us is to share the gospel with somebody else. Each and every one of us. We are to, to present Jesus and represent him in a way that would make him proud. So that one day when we come face to face with Jesus Christ, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Boy, do I want to hear that. Nothing, nothing can compare to that. Hearing Jesus say that to me. I can't think of anything better. So as we stand here today on Memorial Day, we recognize, or Memorial Day coming this weekend, um, we remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, right, for us, for this country. But let's not forget the person who paid the ultimate sacrifice for your soul. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Each and every day as I wake up, I thank you, Lord, for another day. Jesus Christ, thank you so much for dying for me and for every single one of these people here. And all those that don't even realize Lord, I ask that you give us a boldness to share the gospel with anyone we possibly can. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit which guides us and teaches us and comforts us. Lord, I thank you for it all. Jesus, I thank you for everything you did, for every whip that you took across your back. Thank you so much for me and for each and every person on the face of this earth who ever was and ever will be. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.